Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War video. In tonight's video, we're going to be talking about the best settings in this game and settings are very, very important. In previous Call of Duty games, settings were very simple and easy to follow, but I'd say in Modern Warfare, they were very important and in Cold War, they're probably even more important than that. So this is a very, very important video to uh, talk about and settings is one thing where settings and class setups are things that are so simple that anyone can just adjust them to, to optimize them and it will improve your game so much for simple, simple stuff. So we're going to go through every sing single thing you need to know in the settings in this game, from aiming, from sound horn with your headset, from the graphics, from the field of view, from everything. I'm going to be covering it. Second video already, and the game's only been out for a little bit. So like I said, guys, I'm back and making content. So I'd really appreciate if you guys could smack a like on this video. Smack that like button. Let's go for 402 likes. Subscribe if you guys are new, and make sure if you guys are subscribed, also click that notification bell and turn on notifications because a lot of Cold War content is going to be coming your way. Anyway, let's get into it and let's go uh, start right from the top. So, of course, sensitivity. Sensitivity is typical in every Call of Duty game. It's very simple. They usually go either up to 10, up to 14, or up to 20. In this game, it's up to 14. So, sensitivities are very much up to personal preference. For me, especially in a boots on the ground game, you know, in something like Advanced Warfare where they're all flying around the map, you might need a higher sensitivity. But in this game, it's pretty self explanatory and I like to stick somewhere in the middle. Most players are probably going to be between a 4 and a 7 or 8 probably because you can see a 4 is a medium and an 8 is a high and I'm usually right in the middle at 6. Sometimes with sensitivity if you hop on and you haven't played for a while you drop it down a little bit more or if you've been playing 10 hours a day and you're feeling cracked out of your mind you could up it a little bit but 6-6 six, six is what I like with sensitivity. The thing is usually I've always stuck with the horizontal and vertical the same. I know some people if you do want to make a one higher I'd say make the horizontal one higher than your vertical because your, your movement side to side are what's going to be uh, you're going to have to move a lot quicker to snap onto targets. It's very rare you're trying to snap onto a freaking helicopter or something like that. So if you are going to make one higher, I'd say probably make the horizontal higher. But me personally, I like having them both 6-6. Six, six. Next, this is a very, very important setting and it varies depending on what your horizontal and your vertical are. So ADS stick sensitivity. What this basically means is when you're aiming down sights with a normal gun, which is a normal gun, is a magnif magnification of four times or lower. This slows it down so you can aim a little bit better. So if you see, like, like let me put a point 50 right here for you guys so you can see it goes very very slow this is me moving at max speed with a thing so uh, because i'm a 66 sensitivity i typically like to keep this either a 0.9 or just straight up at a one because that is because i'm a 66 sensitivity however let's say i'm someone that likes to play on a 12 12 right now if i have a play on a 12 12 and i keep it at one this is insane you're, you're going to miss so many shots, and this is not going to be very, very good. So if I was to play on a 12-12, I'd probably drop this to a 0.6 or a 0.5 to make it more reasonable, where I can snap on people like this or look around the map quick, but when I'm actually trying to shoot at a target across the map, it's a little bit more centralized and a lot easier to aim. So with these ones, it really matters um, uh, depend, depending on your high zoom. This is more for snipers, right, over four times, uh, and this is the one that's going to matter more for most players. Um, with snipers, it's all up to are you trying to quick scope? Are you trying to drag scope what are you trying to do but with this it really does depend on what you rock so uh, since i'm rocking a 6.6 six, i like to keep it honestly just like at straight up at a one or maybe at a 0. 0.9 if you're at a, an 8.8 8 or a 9.9 9, you might want to rock this at a 0. 0.7 it's all personal preference but keep that in mind that just because you see you know you can't just copy settings directly oh this guy's a this guy's a pro player this guy's a great player i'm going to copy his settings directly it all depends on what you personally like and with this one it uh, it depends a lot on this so you know if these are higher you're going to want to lower this if you're playing at a normal rate, having it at a 1 or a 0.9 is pretty, pretty standard. Next is the button layout. Personally, I like to use the tactical button layout. That is just so you can crouch with the um, right thumbstick and then basically, well, I have a scuff controller, so I'm able to use the melee with the paddle on the back, but your melee becomes the circle button. Um, I really like tactical. I've been using it probably since, like, I don't even know, Modern Warfare 3, maybe even before then I was on tactical, but tactical was really important back in the day because in Modern Warfare 3, you could just, you know, with the right stick, you could drop shot people. But of course, in this game, and they've done a lot of things to nerf tryhards and nerf good players, this game's all about the jump shot. It's not really about the uh, drop shot because when you drop shot, the stupid soldier puts his hand down. What, what are you doing, man? So if I'm trying to shoot someone... 
it's, it, it does work fairly well. It all depends on, I think there are certain attachments that you can do, but it just isn't as efficient as that Modern Warfare 3 where you could just jump, land into a, to a drop shot. It doesn't really work as much because you have the slide in this game as well. So drop shotting, it isn't the worst thing ever, but it's pretty bad compared, you guys might not know what I'm talking about, but if you play the older Call of Duty games, you would see how like drop shotting and you could keep your aim on the gun. But if I'm drop shotting here, you, you're forced into a hip fire mode. So it's not nearly as good, but I still like to rock with the tactical. Um, anything else here that we need to talk about? Aim down sight stuff on. Of course, you want you want all of your uh, aim assist to be on. Uh, here, uh, mantle behavior. This thing is this is interesting because I, I like to have it on manual. If you have it on automatic, you will just automatically mantle things, and it will sort of. If you're fighting someone in a building, you just mantle onto a pool table and lose a gunfight. You climb onto a rock and lose a gunfight. That can be kind of annoying. So I like to have it on manual, and then when you do have it on manual, you can decide if you want to have it on press or if you want that extra extra security you can have it on a second press manual on press is fairly good this is another one that's personal preference but important to know if you're dying a lot for just oh my character keeps ma um, mantling easy fix right here in the settings the uh, rest of this stuff is pretty standard i don't think there's too much to change here um oh when we get down here this is the stick layout so this is dead zones from uh modern warfare it has now been called something a little bit different a minimum input threshold which is the same thing it's the dead zone right so your default these come at 10 and 99 uh the 99 it goes to 100 i don't know why the default is 99 instead of 100 you can i honestly just leave it or put it to 100 it makes almost no difference i'd say but what you want to do is probably lower these down to five this is something that a lot of tryhards or uh competitive players always talk about the dead zones are this is a more tryhard setting where it's not going to make the world a difference but having it on five is just what um everyone is all the tryhards and all the pro players are saying to change your with your dead zones i've never really been someone to fully analyze and go all in depth with the dead zones but another thing with this is if you do have controller stick drift which if you have like a somewhat broken controller you can move this up slightly until your controller stops stops that stick drift that was a problem i was having just the other with one of my controllers the other day uh when i was playing fortnite with my buddy and it, it, i'm trying to revive him and the controller like st is stick drifting and i don't know if there's a setting in fortnite that fixes that but there is one uh luckily here in cold war so that's something that's pretty important next controller sounds i just have them off um i, I I don't need my controller to talk to me. I'm trying to focus on the game. Auto sprint, I also have off. This can be, you could use it, but personally, the whole thing about Call of Duty is you don't want to get caught in a sprint. So having that off is really nice. Now, sprint cancels reload. This is a one that is up to personal preference because if you have it on, and you, and you get caught a traditional way in Call of Duty. Someone catches me in a reload. Oh, I can't reload because I'm, I'm out of ammo. But someone catches me in a reload. Oh, just sprint. Boom, canceled. However, that means you also can't run around while reloading. So in this game, I like to have it off just so I can run around while reloading. And if someone does catch me and I'm in a reload, just hit the YY or triangle, triangle and cancel it. Takes a little bit more practice, but um, then just a sprint to cancel, which was the easy way to do it back in the day. But it is worth it because now you can um, reload as you're running around basically. Next, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, this shouldn't take that much longer, but I want to make sure I'm covering everything for you guys because I'm, I'm telling you, settings are so important, and it's something that if you don't have the right settings, you're just at a disadvantage for no reason. It's kind of how I always feel about a class setup. You don't have to be the best player to pick the right attachments. You know what I mean? You just have to be someone that cares about the game. So first of all, let's go into uh, colorblind modes. This is actually really, really important here. And this is different from in other games. I think last time I used like a colorblind thing was like Modern Warfare 3 where I had the enemies like, or what was it? Teammates blue. And I don't, I don't even remember what it was. But here you can change your different settings. And the way that this works is I decided to go with this one, which is the Tritanopia or whatever you, you say it. And I like to, you can basically set to who you want to be. So personally, this is for me. I like my my character to be uh, light blue. You can rock yellow if it's easier for you to see. Honestly, yellow might even be better. Um, I'm just always used to have my character blue or green, so that's just what I'm using. I might switch it over to yellow later, honestly. I, I don't really know. That one is more, it doesn't really matter because it's just you. It's just you on the mini map. It doesn't really matter. Um, just whatever you like, personal preference. Ally color. This is one that um, can be fairly important. You want to see what your allies are. The default here is the uh, dark blue. I like to run just with the light green, so when I glance up to the mini map very quick, it's easy to tell where my teammates are because teammates positioning is very very important if you understand Call of Duty to understand where you have to play where the enemies are going to spawn all that stuff uh, party color also this is just for your teammates that are on your party so you don't want it to be the same you want to be able to know because usually with the people you're playing with you can trust a little bit more than your um 
then you're just random teammates. So I just rock this right now for this. Of course, the game just came out, but just in a, a bit of a darker shade of blue. These two are all personal preference. I honestly might switch the the U color over to yellow maybe after this. I'm not sure. Gonna have to test that out a little bit. Um, but the main one that matters here, why I'm showing you guys this, these three don't really matter that much, especially these two. The ally color does matter because you want to be able to glance up quick and see where your team is. But this one matters the most, your enemy color. Now, you don't want the enemies to be light blue like that, or it's a bit harder to see, like just, you know, name tags on the minimap, all that stuff. So you want it to be as bright as possible. I like to go with the dark pink, I guess, whatever this color is, because why not? If I can look up at the map, see enemies as dark pink, see my teammates as light green, it's very, very easy there. I'm blue. There's no confusion there. And um, that's just what I think is a smart way to run. This is obviously something that will take take getting used to because on a normal Call of Duties, and you know, I've been playing Call of Duty for so many damn years, I'm not used to my to the enemies being pink on the minimap, but this is something that I think is worth an attempt. And of course, if, if you if you end up hating it, I mean, look at this. This The customizability here is amazing. So these are just my recommendations. I'm not saying you have to rock. You have to rock blue, green, and pink or you're going to lose every game. It really doesn't matter that much. What matters is making sure your teammates and the enemies are bright. And so that quick glance up, because everyone knows from playing Call of Duty, you're playing the game, then you're glancing up at the minimap. You're playing the game, you're glancing up at the minimap. You want to be able to find them very, very quickly when you do glance up. So this is something that take your time, experiment and test around with this, but don't just ignore it because in other games, oh, colorblind, I'm not colorblind. I can just ignore that. Um, and for people that were colorblind, they would turn the settings on. But in this game, it's very, very important. No matter how good your eyes are at testing colors, if you have the sharpest color eyes of all time, you still might want to mess with these settings. Next is field of view. Now field of view is beautiful that this has finally come to console. I like to rock with 110. Personally, um, you, you want to move your field of view up on console. And this is another thing that does take some getting used to, but I think most players will want to find themselves in a comfort zone. Comfort zone, And you can see in the background what it does. Is it's, you know, the field of view. It's pretty self-explanatory. It zooms you out. It makes you it makes you appear like you're running faster, which you're, you're actually not, of course, it's just your field of view, and also just makes you be able to see more things. So I like 110. If you really want to, to stretch, you can go to 120. Um, personally, I'm at 110, but I think most players will be between 100 and 120. 110 is also what I was playing with on the uh, beta and stuff like that. Next is the ADS field of view, and this is one that's very important. Uh, this is actually very important because it comes down to personal preference. So independent versus affected. Basically, if you have independent on, you, you it will go to its intended value. So it doesn't matter what your field of view is, you'll be zooming in, it'll appear like you're zooming in a little bit more, which will make target make it maybe appear that you could be a little more accurate, your targets are a little bit bigger. However, if you use affected, it will give you a value closer to your field of view settings. And it says right there, this does not apply to zooms with a uh, magnification of over four times. But affected, it will appear like you're having less recoil. Uh, of course, it's just an appearance because of how, you know, how your uh, field of view is reacting when you aim down sights. So basically, I'd say independent, it might be able to make them appear like you're zooming in a little bit more. So maybe the targets are a little bit bigger. Affected it appears so you're zooming in a little bit more. It's a little bit skinnier, a little bit less zoom in, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm describing it right, but hopefully I, I am describing it in a simple way that some people can follow or most people. Affected, it will seem like your gun isn't bouncing as much, but that's just because you're more zoomed out. So it depends what you like. Uh, those two are up to personal preference. And this is definitely one that, honestly, I'm going to start out with affected, but this is something that I probably will experiment around a little bit with, but uh, I'm, I'm going to start off with affected uh, for the first uh, little bit of this game and then see if I decide to, you know, if, if the enemies are a bit too far away from me, uh, I might want to go with independent so I get a little bit more, uh, what appears to be a little bit more view uh, to its intended value. Next is motion blur. Motion blur. I don't know why the game comes with motion blur on. It's so annoying every time. I remember, wasn't there like a glitch in the beta where you'd have to, was it the alpha or the beta? I remember there was something where you'd have to disable it every single game. It was so damn annoying. Disable motion blur. You don't want motion blur. You want the game to look clear, clean. Pretty self-explanatory there. Next is audio. You want most stuff at 100. Music, I don't really care about the music. I don't need some epic music to hype me up. I'm hyped enough, up enough just playing the game, trying to focus and try hard. Um, dialogue volume, you could drop down a little bit, uh, if, if the, depending on how the, loud the callouts are. But this is something that's important. You don't want this to go too low. I'd say probably keep it around 75 or 80 plus, um, just because that's pretty important. Next is audio presets. This is a very, very important one. This is just how you're going to be, the basically, the audio mix. And this is 
is like they got, I guess, I don't know, audio engineers, audio engineers giving different mixes here. And this all depends on where you play. If you're using headphones, if you're using, uh, you know, you're playing it in a freaking movie theater, if you're playing it in your uh, kitchen on a small TV, who knows what you're doing. But high boost is traditionally going to be the one that uh, is going to be pretty helpful for most people. And that's the one that I'm going to start off rocking with in this game as well. Just because honestly, heads, uh, not headsets, but footsteps are fairly important in this game. In certain Black Ops and Treyarch games, they've been pretty irrelevant. In other games, they've been pretty important. In this game, I think they are pretty important so far, just off of what I've played, um, you know, based off of mainly my opinion off the beta and stuff like that, how the footsteps are important. Uh, but that's one you're going to want to have on high boost. Uh, voice chat, just personal preference, whether you want that enabled or disabled. And yeah, that's most of the stuff I have here. Um, let's see what else we have, actually. There's a few more things in interface. Yeah, this stuff is all default, but you do want to have all this stuff on. Like... Uh, ally health bars, enemy health bars. This is very, very key because knowing the health bar, if you see a teammate has... Uh you know, uh, his health bar is looking like that guy on the picture, the enemy's probably going to rush him. So you can use that knowledge to your advantage. And any info or knowledge that you can get in a game like this is so damn important. So you want to have this stuff showing. You want to have enemy health bars showing. You want to have their full name showing because just look at the picture. It's, which one is going to be easier to spot on a map where players are blending in? It's going to be easier to spot the guy with his name in a bright color than just a dot with a line in a, in a, in a, in a normal color or even a bright color. So that stuff is pretty simple. And the rest of the this, you just really want to, I believe, have on a default, or I've just left it all on default. That's pretty much it. Uh, keyboard and mouse. If you do plug in a keyboard and mouse, I play with the controller, of course. But uh, that's pretty much it for the settings. Hope you guys did enjoy this video, and hopefully I did a, a decent job explaining everything and why certain things are important and everything like that. Oh, one thing I noticed that I missed here is controller vibration. Uh, the reason for me is because I get my controllers with, uh, my scuff controllers don't have the, the vibrate, uh, whatever it's called, vibration pack, what, rumble pack, that's what it's called, inside of the controller so this doesn't it's irrelevant for me but for most people you're gonna want this disabled that's something that i remember years ago i would always play with vibration people would tell me to turn it off you can, I, just, oh, I like the feeling though of the vibration when i when i would shoot the the gun and uh after i turned it off for the first week it was like oh this sucks and then after that i've been playing with it off for years and years and years so it's something that is worth uh worth it on that end i would say that's about it guys hope you guys did enjoy this video thanks for watching if you guys could drop a like that would be absolutely incredible subscribe to the channel if, if you guys are new new and uh, more tips and tricks, more best class setups, a lot of more vi more videos uh, coming out uh, on Cold War. And I'm very, very excited for this release. And the game is out and um, just making videos on this release because it's hopefully going to be a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully there's going to be, I, I believe there's going to be a lot of content to cover this year for Call of Duty. Thanks for watching guys. Drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace.